This video takes a closer look at the opening of railroad service between St. Paul and Minneapolis, which occurred on May 1, 1867. The St. Paul and Pacific Railroad completed their first railroad line between St. Paul and St. Anthony in 1862, along the red line on this map. However, St. Anthony was on the east side of the Mississippi River. To get to Minneapolis on the west side of the river, a railroad bridge would have to be constructed which was an expensive undertaking. In 1867, St. Anthony and Minneapolis were consolidating into one larger town. The 1862 railroad line tracked down toward the river. In 1863, the St. Paul and Pacific Railroad built an extension on the east side of the Mississippi River to Anoka. The new path to Minneapolis would branch off this extension. The railroad bridge to Minneapolis was built over the winter of 1866-1867. Bridges were generally built during the winter because rivers were lower and they were iced over. The new Minneapolis bridge would actually require two separate bridges because Nicollet Island was chosen for its path. The stone bridge piers were built first. Chief civil engineers William Crooks and James D. Skinner laid the cornerstone for the Minneapolis Bridge Pier between Nicollet Island and Minneapolis on December 21, 1866. The well-known firm of Reynolds, Sulpaw and Company of Rock Island, Illinois, was involved in the pier construction. Bridge 1 was built between St. Anthony and Nicollet Island. This photograph, looking to the north-northwest, shows Bridge 1 in the background. The bridge was 300 feet in length, had one center pier, and two abutments. To keep a level track through Nicollet Island, the grade had to be dug down by about 12 feet. Bridge 2 was built from Nicollet Island to Minneapolis. This bridge was about twice as long as the first bridge. Therefore, it needed two piers built into the river and had two abutments. Also of note on this picture is a Minneapolis suspension bridge, downstream of the railroad bridge, which was used for pedestrians and wagon traffic. Bridge 2 can be seen in the background of this 1874 lithograph. When both bridges were completed and the new track was laid, a special excursion to celebrate the event was planned for May 1, 1867. The excursion began at the depot in St. Paul, which was located near the Red Circle. The steam locomotive William Crooks was selected as the engine for the trip. The William Crooks was the first locomotive in Minnesota and had pulled the first train between St. Paul and St. Anthony back in 1862. William Crooks the Man was the first chief civil engineer of the St. Paul and Pacific Railroad. In 1867, the superintendent of the St. Paul and Pacific Railroad was Francis R. Delano. James D. Skinner was a chief civil engineer working on the Minneapolis extension. Chief Engineer William Crooks had been switched to the division working on building the extension to the east of St. Paul. Working the main railroad duties for the excursion trip were locomotive engineer Charles W. Deering, fireman Albert Ely, and conductor Horace Breed. All were relatively young men. Railroad officials and a number of private citizens boarded the train at the depot in St. Paul at 1 p.m. and the train departed the gate. To get to St. Anthony, the train actually departed to the east, then made a quick turn to the north. On this larger perspective, you can see the turn to the north depicted by the blue arrow. This map was made later than 1867, so most of the other railroad lines on the map were not there in 1867. The train then made a turn to the west, then northwest, where it pulled into the depot at St. Anthony. The depot was located somewhere in the neighborhood of the Red Circle. At St. Anthony, a brief stop was made to prepare for the first crossing. It was said that several people on the excursion train began to become a little nervous at this point. The whistle sounded and on went the train to the first bridge. Here is a closer view of the St. Anthony to Nicollet Island Bridge. The excursion train quickly crossed the bridge to Nicollet Island. People were most nervous about crossing the second, larger bridge across the main channel of the Mississippi River. It was said that the apparently frail bridge structure, its height above the rushing river, and the imaginary horrors of the bridge breaking made some of the passengers unusually quiet. The red arrow shows the location of the suspension bridge, which was shown earlier. 
The railroad bridge was just behind the suspension bridge. Despite the nervousness, the train crossed the second bridge as well, with no problems. As the train reached the Minneapolis depot, a throng of people welcomed the Iron Horse with cheers. In the months after this historical milestone, there were a couple of devastating blows to the St. Paul and Pacific Railroad. First, their main shops in St. Paul burned down on June 22, 1867. The fire destroyed the machine shop, the William Crooks locomotive, several railroad cars, 250 cords of wood, and other inventory, which was all valued at about $150,000. A month later, portions of the bridge were destroyed during a flood and subsequent log jam. Heavy rain fell in the St. Cloud Sock Rapids area, upstream of Minneapolis. Millions of logs, which were held in the river system for various lumber mills, broke loose and headed downstream to Minneapolis. The Mississippi River at Minneapolis rose within 18 inches of the bottom of the new railroad bridge. At this height, these logs could easily snag on the bridges, and they did. By the evening of July 21st, the logs reached Minneapolis, and the river was full of logs from shore to shore. The Nicollet Island abutment of Bridge 2 gave way from the pressure of the flood and logs, causing that end to fall into the river. Three or four people were walking on this section of the bridge when it fell, but they were saved. Railroad officials quickly tied iron cables to the end in the water, securing them to Nicollet Island. This prevented the bridge from being washed away, but $10,000 in damages did occur. As for Bridge 1 between St. Anthony and Nicollet Island, the bridge survived. However, it was said that logs were jammed in this section of the river so thick that they were piled about 10 feet above the height of the river. So what happened to the railroad people who have been mentioned previously? William Crooks was born in New York in 1832. Crooks was the first chief civil engineer of the St. Paul and Pacific Railroad. He drove in the first spike for the railroad in 1862. Crooks was given a colonel's commission in the 6th Minnesota Regiment during the Civil War and the 1st Minnesota Locomotive and Crookston, Minnesota were named in his honor. He would later move to Portland, where he died in 1907. Francis R. Delano was born in Massachusetts in 1823. He became the first warden of the Stillwater Prison, then became the superintendent of the St. Paul and Pacific Railroad in 1864. The town of Delano, Minnesota is named after him. Delano died in St. Paul in 1887. James D. Skinner was born in New York around 1831. Skinner was a graduate of Yale University and later became chief civil engineer of the St. Paul and Pacific Railroad. Skinner died in St. Paul in 1881. Charles W. Deering was born in New Hampshire in 1842. He served a 37-year railroad career, first with the St. Paul and Pacific and later with the Great Northern Railroad. He died at Lake Minnetonka in 1916. Albert Ely was born in Minnesota in 1844. His father was one of the first settlers of the state. Albert would later become a locomotive engineer, working the Seattle to Tacoma line of the Northern Pacific Railroad. Albert died in Seattle in 1903. Horace Breed was born in New York in 1845. He worked many positions with the St. Paul and Pacific Railroad and also at Delano, Minnesota. He later became the superintendent for several different railroads. Horace died in New York in 1911. That concludes the video. Please check out my websites at mnbricks.com and chaskabrick.com.